Kawhi Leonard status uh, for tonight? Yeah, Kawhi's out tonight. Okay. Uh, is there is there any concern uh, with what he's dealing with, even though he's been on the trip with you guys? No, I mean, he's definitely getting better, but it's always concerned when our players miss games. But like I said, he's progressing. Um, he's feeling pretty good. We just want to be cautious and, um, you know, just take our time with him. Okay. And uh, you guys didn't see Joel and B when the Sixers were in L.A. last month. Uh, you mentioned how because of the lineup that the Sixers put out, it was hard to kind of have Zoo out there for extended stretches. That's not going to be a factor tonight. So what are you kind of looking for Zoo specifically, and, and how do you approach – uh, the the challenge that is facing Joel Embiid? Well, I think early on, you know, just trying to double team as much as we can to try to keep the ball out of his hands and, um, you know, get the ball out of his hands and then keep Zoo and our bigs out of foul trouble because he does a great job of getting fouled and getting to the free throw line because he's so crafty. So early on, we just want to show him different looks, but try to come and double team to get the ball out of his hands so we can try to save Zoo for the second half. So, um, you know, he's a problem down the block. We understand that, but we're not going to let him just play one-on-one all night. Thanks a lot. We'll go next to Farbath. Hey, Coach. Um, you know, they, they announced the other day that Michael Jordan was going to be inducting Kobe Bryant into the Hall of Fame. If it's a sensitive topic, you don't, you don't have to address it. But I was just kind of curious, you know, you, what was the relationship you saw between them? Because you played with both of them and you were, you were actually one of the few that were right next to them in that moment where he and MJ were kind of um, play fighting each other courtside and you were trying to help MJ out. Um, just, you know, MJ's always been a mentor to Kobe, you know, from day one. And even when I played with the Lakers and, and MJ was, you know, in an executive business, he always would call MJ and lean on MJ about certain things and things he needed to work on, things he needed to do and how to handle certain situations. Um, so it was somebody he definitely looked up to. And MJ just looked at him like his younger brother, like whatever he could do to help Kobe out and um, be there for Kobe, he always was. So um, that's just a great honor, you know, to have, you know, Michael Jordan, you know, doing this for Kobe, you know, sorry he can't be here, um, you know, with his passing, but, you know, what better person to do it than Michael Jordan, you know, someone that Kobe patterned his game after, um, who we think, you know, who we think is the greatest of all time, and to come out and, you know, represent Kobe at the Hall of Fame is, is unbelievable, and I'm happy he's able to do it. Thank you. Next to Tomer. Hey, Ty, uh, first off, just, just basing off the last uh, post game, did you feel like, um, I know you said you're going to watch the film, did you feel like the shots you got, you guys got in that fourth were good? Yeah, I thought we got some pretty good shots. And then, you know, I thought some we just had to create on our own. You know, Nick Batum made a couple tough shots. Um, but, you know, for the most part, we tried to play the right way, you know, and um, that's all you can ask. And then our guys came through and made some tough shots for us. Thanks. And then second, um, a lot's been made about, you know, I think Ben Simmons has gone on his own little defensive player of the year tour uh, the last couple of weeks. But I'm just curious, like from your perspective, what makes him um, a guy that's tough to go up against, um, you know, as a defender? Because he wants it. You know, he wants to guard the best player, you know. And I'm just seeing him from playing last year. Like one time he ran all the way across the court, you know, to try to get to Kawhi and give him a lot of a layup on the other side of the floor because he wants to guard the best. You know, when you're a defender and a top-notch defender, you know, you want that challenge, you know, guarding the best player every single night. And if you watch, you know, Philly play, he does it every single night. He wants that challenge. He takes the challenge. And that's, and that's, and that's like 100%, I mean, that's 80% of the battle right there of just wanting that challenge every single night. Gotcha. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Miriam. Hey, Ty. Hope you're well. Um, uh, you guys made it official that, that uh, DeMarcus is gone the second day, 10 day. Um, and, you know, you talked a little bit about, you know, get to give some plays going forward here. But just kind of wondered what, what's he been like to have around the last 10 days and, and how he's sort of fitting he's in. Great. You know, cause, you know, a lot of people didn't know Cousins, you know, before he got here. So they didn't know, like, everywhere he's been, he's always been a great teammate. And, you know, he's fun to be around. And so guys didn't know that because they see him on the floor and, you know, he's always scowling or, you know, he's mad on the floor. But. Um, you know, the guys that just had a, finally had a chance to be around, they loved him. Like, man, I didn't know he was that cool. I didn't know this and that. So it just had good having him around, you know, um, fun in the locker room, fun with the young guys. And, like, you know, so every single day just working and trying to pick up what we're trying to do and trying to get better. He, he himself talked about, like, how much work he put in to kind of get back to this place. Um, are you seeing signs of that as well? Oh, for sure. You know, every day he's coming over with the young guys early, putting in the work, going over the plays, getting his conditioning in. I mean, he's doing all the right things that he's supposed to do to try to get us get himself to where he wants to be. Thanks, Ty. 
Next up, Mason, go ahead. Hey, Ty. Um, I know it's not doesn't really concern you guys because of where you are in the standings, but I'm just curious if you had any thoughts on the idea of the play-in tournament because a lot's been made about the fairness of it, especially in Dallas. Um, just want to hear your thoughts on the idea of it. I respect your question, but I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to get into it. You know, I just follow the NBA's lead and just kind of go from there. No worries. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we'll go to Jake Fisher. Hey, Ty, as the season, you know, winds down, a lot of, you know, coach are talking about lineup adjustments and, and, and tweaking their you know, combinations for the playoffs. And with you guys, there's been an emphasis, it sounds like, of like ramping things up for the postseason and making sure you're finding your stride and your peak and your rhythm heading into May. Can you give us any, like, tangible examples of how you actually accomplish that, like something during a shoot-around or what you do with a lineup adjustment to try to get your guys really – moving more towards a postseason environment rather than the regular season grind? Yeah, well, it's been tough for us because we had so many injuries. So we haven't been really, you know, allowed to play with all of our lineups and play with all of our players. So, um, you know, just trying to – just trying just trying to figure out, you know, when guys are going to be back, we get our whole team back. And that's kind of when you want to do it. But, like I said, it's just a lot of – a lot of chance and opportunities for our young guys to get better, um, you know, continue to, to get better and get more and more confidence. So until we get healthy, we really can, you know, see those different lineups and things that we want to do. Thanks. Next to Justin Russo. Hey, Coach. I uh, apologize if I missed this. D uh, did you name the starting lineup? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, Reggie Jackson, um, Luke Kennard, um, not sure on PG right now. He's been under the weather the last two days. Um, he wasn't at shoot around today, so um, not sure until he gets here to the arena uh, whether he's going to go or not. So if he doesn't go, it'll be Terrence Mann, uh, Marcus Morris, and Zubak. Right. And I wanted to ask you about PG. His last game in Indiana, he seemed like he was in the right playmaking mindset with reads and such. And I know you've talked about how you basically have to force feed him into those uh, routines just to get ready for the postseason. Do you feel he's gotten more comfortable as the season's gone along? Oh, for sure. You know, he definitely got more comfortable uh, making all the reads, all the different passes. Um, and like I said, just, you know, just with him and Kawhi, just understanding what we're trying to do. And they made big sacrifices, you know, to be able to make your teammates better, but also get yours at any point in time. And, you know, when you have two guys like that that get the shot off anytime they want one-on-one, -on -one, um, it's easy to do, but they really bought into you know, getting their shots, getting us, you know, scoring the basketball, but also making their teammates better. And uh, we went to another level since they've been doing that. Thank you. Thanks. We've got time for one more. Go ahead, Bobby. Hey, Ty. I got another general question about this season. When it comes to players with everyone being in isolation this year, have you noticed it tougher for players to tune out noise, whether it be analysts or fans or media in general, what's being said outside the team, and how have you learned to deal with that in your career? I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. Could you say it again? It's kind of loud. <laughs> they got me in the lobby. <laughs> I was saying this year with everyone kind of being in isolation, have you noticed with players it's tougher to tune out noise outside the team, whether it's what fans are saying or what media is saying about the team, and how have you learned to deal with that in your career? Um, I don't know because I don't have social media, so I don't really deal with that. Um you know, I watch a lot of basketball. When they start talking about us, I put it on mute. And um, if we win 10 games in a row or lose 10 games in a row, I just try to fly straight and just, you know, deal with us, you know, internally. So I don't really listen to the outside stuff. And um, I'm not sure about our guys. You have to ask them. But I just try to fly straight, just be the same every single day and not worry about what people are saying on the outside and just work on and continue working on, you know, what we need to do as a team and as an organization um, to win a championship. Thanks, Ty. We'll let you go. Have a good game. We'll Thank talk you. to you after. Thank you, everyone else.